welcome everybody to another edition of uh, you know teachings or whatever and um, <laughs> I title this you better understand the full meaning of the test of a prophet and the reason why I I'm bringing this up is <laughs> I got a very I got a comment from a very older video I did and I will read this quote to you from what this commenter sent me um, he is a follower of this man, Dr. O'War, who I, whom I have exposed with relative ease, okay? I, I mean, this guy is so phony, it's, 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 it's ridiculous, okay? Um, and if you doubt that, please go see the videos I made on him, and also videos I made coming from his own mouth, the things he said, Okay? And don't come up with the excuse that, oh, well, you know, he, he speaks a different language, so his language was off. He speaks perfect English, folks. He knows exactly what he was saying. I'm not going to make this a whole spew about Dr. O'War. He's a false prophet. He's a false teacher. Um, and this is what we're going to be getting into, plus a little side notes here and there. Okay. Um, this is what he said. And I made this video way back in uh, 2011, so almost two years ago. Um, and this comment just came up the other day. He says, so I'm still getting comments on these videos. It's kind of amazing, actually. It says, quote, his prediction have come to pass. Remember, he talked about flood in America in his prophecy. And look at what, what has happened in New York. Speaking of the uh, hurricane uh, Sandy that came through. Okay, now that's another thing with uh, Hurricane Sandy. Um, the mainstream media really hyped this thing. Now, don't get me wrong. No doubt. It, it, it was a devastating event. Records were shattered. Many people lost their lives. It's very unfortunate. My, heart, my, thought, my thoughts and prayers goes to the recovery of those people in New York and the ones that are really hard hit from the storm. But the way they were making it out was so apocalyptic. Like, it, it's like the wrath of God going on, you know. I mean, they did overhype it. Um, but at the same time, it was a very devastating storm. So I'm going to state that for the record. But he was referencing that as to what happened with Sandy. Now, granted, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I'm actually going to, you know, give this award the benefit of the doubt and say, yeah, I'm pretty sure some of his prophecies have come to pass. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt that if all his prophecies come to pass. And this is what we're going to get into today. Okay. Number one, you, most of you that have watched my videos long enough, you know that I am anti-rapture. Okay. And, and it's clearly documented in scripture. You can throw stones at me all you want. I don't care. Period. Okay. Um, and so we're going to start off with Matthew 24, 23 through 27, okay? And, 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 um, and it goes as follows. Then if any man shall say unto you, lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not, for there shall rise false Christs and false prophets. And shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. So I'm not above being deceived, okay? And neither you should be thinking this way either. Yeah, false Christ. It, th th this isn't just people running around claiming, I'm Jesus, I'm Jesus, who I'm Jesus. And, you know, this, it's, 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 it's not that. Okay, false Christ, false anointed ones. Um, people who claim they come in the name of Jesus, you know, saying, I am anointed, saying, I am Christ, which means anointed one. Okay. So a lot of false teachers, prophets, teachers slash prophets, they're one and the same thing, folks, and we're going to prove it. It's not just somebody talking about future events here. It's not just talking about prophesying future events. It's speaking accordingly to the word of God 100%. And if they are not, they're a false prophet. They're a false teacher. Period. 
and we're going to document this. We're, I'm going to give you proof. A lot of people just like to look at Deuteronomy 18 and throw the rest out the window without searching Deuteronomy 13. But even though Deuteronomy 13 actually kind of emphasizes in Deuteronomy 18 if you read it carefully. Moving on. Matthew 24, 25. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, it, if, they sh if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert. Go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers. Believe it not. Oh my goodness, a lot of people like to use um, Isaiah 29. I'm going to talk about go into your chambers. Well, the chambers in Isaiah is not a secret chamber. Jesus is strictly telling us, Behold, he is in the secret chambers. Believe it not. You ain't going away in some secret rapture into some secret chamber. Okay. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. All eyes shall see him. Okay. All eyes. It ain't going to be some whispering away event before the abominations of desolations that sets up, which starts a great tribulation, which is three and a half years long. Not seven. Get it right, folks. We have been in tribulation for a long time. And if you want to use Daniel 9.27 for this uh, uh, period of seven years, fine, use it. That just means that possibly we've already been going through the tribulation in the last three and a half years. Which is tribulation, not great tribulation, time of sorrows, beginning of sorrows, these types of things. But I'm telling you, you've had wars and rumors of wars going on for the longest time. And as speaking of Daniel 9, there's multiple layers in that prophecy, folks. It's not just what you see on the surface. So, um, I don't have time to get into that whole thing. But when that abomination of desolations is set up, set up, okay, then let those be in Judea flee into the mountains. That's Then shall there be great, great tribulation. So when that abomination is set up, not just tribulation, great tribulation, three and a half years, not seven. Over and over again in Revelation, it speaks about three and a half years, three and a half years, three and a half years. In different ways, 42 months. <laughs> and after those three and a half years, this is what we're going to be witnessing, folks. We're not going to be up in heaven having some good old bar mitzvah while everyone is suffering hell on earth and stuff like that. We are going to be here, folks. You better just suck it up and deal with it. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Sorry if I'm sounding kind of harsh, but you know what? The, 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 the time for passiveness is over. Alright? <coughs> now in the very next chapter, I'm going to get a little bit into the wise versions. I'm not going to read the whole thing. Um... I'm just going to get into a, the first couple of verses because I wanted to point something out here. Matthew 25, 1. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bride, bridegroom. Five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. Oil is a, is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. The lamp is like the word of God. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. You need oil to light the lamp. If you don't have the Holy Spirit dwelling in you, if you don't have God dwelling in you, then guess what? You ain't going to have a lit lamp. So you're going to be walking blindly, like a drunkard. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamp. Now, pay attention to this first. A lot of people like to miss this right here. Matthew 25, 5. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. They all the wise and the foolish. <laughs> the bridegroom Terry, Jesus Terry. They people are making these predictions, thinking when he's going to come, and he, he and he's he, he's not coming at a time that they're appointing. The bridegroom is tearing, for they all slumber and slept. Those that believe in pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib, whatever, wise and foolish. And at the midnight hour there was a cry, or and at midnight, cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Now let me tell you something about this whole thing with no man knows the day or the hour. Okay? I think it's in Matthew 
uh, actually, I think it is a Matthew 24. Okay, it says, Till heaven and earth pass away. You know, no man knows a day, day or hour till heaven and earth pass away. If you reference that to Revelation, speaking in the same context, it says, Behold, the former things have passed away. The heavens and the earth have passed away. Okay. That given period of time, from when the thousand year period starts and ends, especially at the ending point where Satan is loose for a little season, there's not a given time period there. So no man knows the day or hour, nor not the angels, nor the son, but the father only. Okay, so you have to, you know, there, there, there's, there's two preferences of not knowing the day or hour. That preference of Matthew 24 is speaking at the end of the thousand years, folks. It's not talking about before. Besides, it's an angel that sounds a trumpet. I'm pretty sure he has an idea when to sound it. Okay. So, and yes, I'm a firm believer that the first four feast days have been fulfilled, and the final three feast days will be fulfilled at the second coming of Christ. Just like he fulfilled the first four, he will fulfill the last three. Alright? So, and at midnight hour, there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. But while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. Well, what does that mean? No, people weren't watching. They're all saying, oh, he's going to come before the tribulation. Oh, he's going to come this, he's going to come that. They're all making these assumptions. I tell you what, when the abomination of desolation starts and the great tribulation begins, you'll know. What you have to do is count three and a half years, and then you will know the day. Or once he will return. Won't be that hard to figure out. So I'll get into that in, a, in another video. Okay. But I wanted to bring this up. Because a lot of people like to miss this little tiny verse here. <laughs> Virgins. Now now here's another thing. You know, I, I'm, I'm not going to get into a whole debacle debate on this. Um, I... Uh, this is a very contemplative issue regarding the bride of Christ. Who is the bride? Is it the church? Is it you know the um, the body of Christ? Whatever. Um, you look at the word virgins that are used here, wise and foolish. Okay. You look at the word virgins. It means of unknown origin, a maiden by implication, an unmarried daughter. Virgin, unmarried daughter. So. Even the wise virgins are unmarried. How can they be the bride? That I, you know, I'm, I'm just bringing this question up here, over and over again. In Reve I mean, in Revelation, it says, "Behold, I see Jerusalem coming down as a bride adorned for her husband," or something like that. Or it says, "Come, I will show you the lamb's the the bride, the lamb's wife." And then it says, "I see New Jerusalem descending out of heaven." Okay, and then it, in uh, Galatians, it talks about. Um, New Jerusalem being the mother of us all. Well, if New Jerusalem is the mother of us all, and we are all children of God, how can we be children of God and bride and, and, and the bride? It just doesn't make sense. Okay, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm just stating this, this. I'm not trying to get into a huge debacle on this, okay? I'm just raising some questions. Okay, um, virgins means unmarried daughter. But, uh, so how can we actually be the bride? If New Jerusalem is the mother of us all, and we are all children, who is the father? Well, the father is God. Well, who is the mother? The mother is New Jerusalem. Well, so that means... The mother has to be married to a father, right? You know, metaphorically speaking, basically. So, the mother is married to Father God, the bride, Jesus, you know, Jesus Christ. You know, the bridegroom. You know, so, I mean, it's, it's, um, 
it's a very complex issue that I'm not really going to get too much in, into it. I'm, I'm just stating that this is what the vir word virgin means. It means unmarried daughter. Okay, virgin, a marriageable maiden, a woman who has never had sexual intercourse with a man, one's marriageable daughter. Marriageable. Okay. And But this is the key one here. A man who has abstained from all uncleanness and whoredom attendant on idolatry and so has kept his chastity. Okay, or one who has never had intercourse with women. All right. Now. Okay. Um. Now, what does the word prophet means? And this is again, I'm going to prove once again that the Hebrew text does not conflict with the New Testament Greek text, okay? If anyone's telling you otherwise, like the Sacred Name Movement and the Hebrew Roots Movement, guess what? They're false teachers too, and false prophets. So I'm going to prove to you once again that these never contradict each other. They don't. They don't. Hebrews, the Hebrew meaning for prophet. You look it up, it comes from uh, this number right here means Nabi, which means a prophet or generally an inspired man. Prophecy, that prophesy, prophet, okay? It means a spokesman. It doesn't mean just somebody that tells the future, a speaker, okay, or prophet. Prophet, false prophet, false teacher, okay? Um, and here's some verses you can look up with this word in it. Genesis 27, um, Deuteronomy 34.10, Judge 6, 8, this is the last time the word prophet in the Old Testament is used. Zechariah 13, 5. Now, notice this is from a primitive word uh, from number 5012, which means naba, which means, again, to prophesy. That is, speak, so here it is again, or sing by inspiration. Inspiration of what? It's either God or the devil. Pick one. Prophesy, prophesying, makes, makes self a prophet. Okay, to prophesy, to prophesy under influence of divine spirit of false prophets. To prophesy under influence of divine spirit of false prophets, same thing. <coughs> Where is this word used? Well, a very primitive uh, passage is in Jeremiah 23. 25 through 32. Okay. I have heard what the prophets said that prophesied lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed. I have dreamed. How many people do we have doing this uh, stuff? Oh, I got dreams of the rapture. I got dreams of, the, of this. I got dreams of that. I'm telling you one, if you haven't dreamed of the rapture, I'm sorry, buddy, but it's not of God. I'm going to come out flat out and say it. So you better be testing these spirits that are giving you these dreams. Time is short. The time is late. I ain't get that. There's no more time for beating around the bush here. I mean, I, I've tried to passively explain this kind of stuff, and I can't do it anymore. I, I can't be just passive about it. You can hark and scream at me all you want. I really don't give a hoot and holler. I'm speaking to you straight from the Word of God, and that's it. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yea, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it, which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. The prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream, and he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff to the wheat, saith the Lord? Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? Ooh, it's going to hurt sometimes, folks. And yes, the word of God will cause divisions. Because people don't want to hear it. The ones who profess to be Christians. Jesus says, I came not to bring peace on this earth, but a sword. Basically, divisions against a mother and his father. You know, a mother and a husband. A son against father. A daughter against mother. 
Brother against brother. Yes, you know, the, the true body of Christ, the true body of believers, the true church will be in agreement. <laughs> but uh, for the most part, you're probably going to be surrounded with people that are going to be divided from you because of their belief of what they want the scriptures to say instead of just reading the scriptures for what they say and leaving it at that where it is like a two-edged sword <laughs> and that's your weapon hopefully you're not carrying around a false a false version because if you're carrying around a false version it's like bringing a, a wet noodle to a gunfight it's not going to work too well. <laughs> like that, you know, I think you want a sharp two-edged sword, not a wet noodle. Anyway, <laughs> therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that steal my words every one from his neighbor. Behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that use their tongues and say, He saith. How many, how much, how many, how many times do we have that going around today? All these prophets. Everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. God showed me this. God showed me that. God showed me this. Show me the Bible. Oh, it's right there. Oh, but that's not exactly what it says. Oh, no. He, he showed me that this is going to happen. No. I understand people will have dreams and visions. Old men will dream dreams and young men will receive visions. But we're also at a time of the greatest deception that we have ever known. We're not telling, I'm, not, I'm telling you right now. And the chances are the majority of the people that you are hearing, because you refuse to search your scriptures yourself and be like the breeze that you're supposed to and test the spirits to prove whether these things are so including me and you're just saying amen to this and amen to that hey I agree with you I amen 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 what's this amen stuff you know just because they say I'm a Christian or I believe in God or I had a dream about the rapture or da 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 da, -da are you gonna just say amen to it I'm telling you right now, don't don't just say amen to my videos without searching me out. Don't do it. <laughs> okay, I'm telling you right now, I, I, I'll, I'll be the first to say that. Don't, don't come on here and tell me amen if you have not, if you just listened to this video and you didn't search these things out yourself. Okay, that's why I, I give you the screen captures right next to me, so you can write this stuff down and look it up and do some more digging and more studying. And hey, you might come up with something that I might have made a mistake on, and if I did, thank you. I will try to do my best to correct it on the next video. That's what it's all about. Not just amen, brother, amen. Don't don't be doing that on my videos by just listening to it and not searching yourselves. You be like the Bereans you're supposed to be, which were no more noble than those in Thessalonica, which search the scriptures to prove whether these things are are so. And this was Paul. I'm no Paul. The Bereans searched Paul. Okay. <laughs> and I I I I don't measure up to him. I personally don't think so. Okay. So, if you're saying amen to every cotton picking, twig and berry preacher out there, that just proves that you're not searching the scriptures yourselves. 
Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams, saith the Lord, and do tell them, and cause my people to err by their lies and by their likeness. Yet I sent them not, nor commanded them. Therefore they shall not profit this people at all, saith the Lord. Now, prophet in the New Testament, what does the word mean? Prophetes. Foreteller. By analogy, an inspired speaker. There it is again. Inspired speaker. What does it mean in the Old Testament? Speaker. <laughs> inspired man. Same thing. The Hebrew does not contradict the Greek. Coin Greek. Comes from the word comes from a compound of forty two fifty three and fifty three forty six, those two words, which means pro, which means a force that is in front of prior, figuratively superior to, in compounds it retains the same significations above a go before or ever. In compounds it retains the same significations. And the other one that's a compound of is properly the same as the base and to show or make known one's thoughts that is speak or say. It's the same thing. Speaker. Not just one that tells the future, but a teacher. Speaker. Why am I saying all this? We're going to get to it in a moment. Okay? Prophetes. In Greek writings, an interpreter of oracles or of other hidden things. You know, it speaks about the oracles of God. Guess what those are, by the way, the Ten Commandments? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it says it right there in Acts. <laughs> it's, it's clear as day, cut and dry. Um, one who moved by the Spirit of God and hence his organ or spokesman solemnly declares to men that he has received by inspiration, especially concerning future events, and in particular such as relate to the cause and kingdom of God and to human salvation now please don't be going around and say oh it's not just talking about future events I'm a prophet now I'm a prophet no don't, don't be doing that <laughs> okay then you're just becoming prideful The Old Testament prophets, having foretold the kingdom, deeds, and death of Jesus the Messiah, of John the Baptist, the herald of Jesus the Messiah, of the illustrious prophet, the Jews expected before the event, advent of the Messiah, or the Messiah, of men filled with the Spirit of God, who by God's authority and command, in words, await, please the cause of God, and urges salvation of men. It's not just talking about future events. Of prophets that appeared in the apostolic age among Christians. They are associated with the apostles. They discerned and did what is best for the Christian cause, foretelling certain future events. Okay? So it's both. It is not just talking about people who prophesy things in the future. You want to know about the future events? It's in the Law and the Prophets, folks. It's right there in the Word of God. All you got to do is read it. <clears throat> In the, in the religious assemblies of the Christians, they were moved by the Holy Spirit to speak, having power to instruct, comfort, encourage, rebuke, convict, and stimulate their hearers. A poet, because poets were believed to sing under divine inspiration. Okay. This is the first time the word prophet is used. Now all this was done, what it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying... And this is the last time the word prophet is used. Revelation 22, 9. I'm going to read Revelation 22, 8 through 12. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which shoot, which shoot me these things, showed me these things. See, John fell down to worship before the feet of the angel, Okay. Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren, the prophets, teachers, you know, 
that are teaching truth, speakers that are speaking truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. Sanctify me, find me through thy word. Thy word is truth. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Yeah, that truth. Period. The Holy Scriptures. And of them which keep the sayings of this book, worship God, not an angel. So you're either, you're either worshiping God in spirit and in truth, or you're worshiping the devil. The blind leadeth the blind, they both fall into a ditch. I mean, a lot of these 501c3 churches are, you know, yoked up, you know, well, all 501c3 churches are yoked up with the government one way, shape, or form or another. They're not worshiping God. They're worshiping the government because they got to go by what the government says. And who is the government controlled by? Well, who is the God of this world? But there's your answer. You know, it, 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 it ain't no small matter that Jesus said that wide and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and narrow is the way that leads, leads to life, life eternal, and few, be, few there be that find it. It's not just a uh, verse you say, oh, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 no, okay, okay. Yeah, it means a lot, especially in this day and age. <clears throat> and he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He's writing, he's writing this in John's time. So in John's time it was at hand. And it's still at hand. Coming a lot closer, though. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. There's going to come a time where the chapter, the book, is going to be closed. And whatever is done, is done. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. Holy means set apart or separate. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. The opposite is a world saying, hey, we all need to unite together and, you know, come together in unity. Mm -mm -mm -mm. <clears throat> Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his works shall be. So, yes. This is what they, like I said at, at, at the beginning, this guy gave me this comment, and um, I just really felt compelled to do this video. Now, here is the crux of the matter. Here is, he, here is the, uh, the part where I'm going to nip this in the bud here. Deuteronomy 18, 18 through 22. We've all heard this. We all know what it says. But we just read one verse and then just say, okay, yep, that sounds simple enough, but is it just that simple? <laughs> okay, let's just read it now, shall we? 18 through 22. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall Command him. God is going to put his words in his mouth. He will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren. Notice that capital P there. It's kind of interesting. <clears throat> and it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, my words, the scriptures, word of God. You know, this right here, yeah, that. Who some people like to claim is the mark of the beast. Yeah, no, no, okay. Yeah, I don't know what kind of beans he's eating, but he's he's pretty full of them. Um. <laughs> Uh, let's see, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. Now, but the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, 
This is what we got going on a lot today. They are presuming that that David of War, Doctor War, or and all these other YouTube shenanigan people out there, they are presuming to speak a word of my name, which I have not commanded him to speak. Even though they say, "Oh, the Holy Spirit," you know, there are so many Holy Spirits in this world right now; it's unbelievable. Oh, the Holy Spirit told me this, and the Holy Spirit told me that. And this Holy Spirit is telling me different things than the other Holy Spirit that this other guy is receiving from. I thought God was the same yesterday, today, and forever. Apparently, not. Oh, but you'll have this one group, Osti. No, we have all the right answers. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, we have the all, all the right answers. Okay, okay. Time to get off your high horse. Pray for humility. Let go of the pride. It's a lot of times that the, what you are saying that the Holy Spirit gives you, you're not doing your job and testing the spirits like you're supposed to be. Anyway, but the prophet which shall presume to speak a word of my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. Very serious matter. Yeah, granted, uh, the law of sin and death has been nailed to the cross, yes. And guess what? It's still a death sentence if you have not received salvation. And that death sentence is an is a eternal death sentence, eternal separation from God. Ultimately, being thrown into the lake of fire, where you will ultimately cease to exist. Because hell is not going to be forever, folks. It says hell and those are thrown into the lake of fire. So, I know a lot of people like to talk about people suffering forever and ever and being tortured and stuff like that and you know you know I'm, I'm sorry you know I'm sorry that you want to be so sadistic you know but you know hell and those that go into the lake of fire will cease to exist now I mean now when you die well you know what like I said Hell will cease to exist. Has it ceased to exist now? No. So is it there? Yes. That is eternal separation from God, awaiting judgment. For it is appointed unto man once to die, and after this a judgment. Anyway, and if thou sh and if thou say in thine heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord hath not spoken? When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken. But the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously, presumed to speak in his name. Thou shalt not be afraid of him. Don't be afraid of these yuppie prophets or so-called prophets. I mean, Dr. War is one of the worst ones of them all. I mean, come on, man. He literally flat out and said that, you know, uh, you know, his shoulder bone broke. He comes out and says, oh, oh, look at Matthew 24, 8. You know, you know, and these are the beginning of sorrows. Then look at Matthew 24, 9. Then shall they deliver you up and you shall be persecuted and put to death. And then he goes, oh, well, how is it possible that we jump from the beginning of sorrows to being delivered up and persecuted and put to death? Then he goes, in between these two verses is hidden the rapture. Ah, I, I thank you for clarifying that understanding for me. So you're telling me that Matthew 24, 8 and a half is telling me where the rapture is. I am a rapture believer now. Thank you, I have it. 
Give me a break. Guess what? That alone, besides all the stuff where he says his shoulder broke and stuff, I mean, go go through my videos. Look at all the Dr. O'Rourke videos. I have given you documentation, proof, out of his own mouth that he has said this. And people, you know, people want to go after these guys, not just him. I'm sorry. No, I'm not sorry. He's a false prophet. He's a false teacher. Call it the way it is. They're beating around the bush. Anyway, y'all should not be afraid of him. And look at what it says up here. And and you're gonna see this in Deuteronomy 13. But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word of my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods. Pay attention to that right there. Okay, name of other gods. Now, let's look at Deuteronomy 13, 1 through 5, and we're going to close with this. If there arise among you a prophet, or a dreamer of dreams, and giveth thee a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder come to pass. <laughs> so, there is going to be prophets coming up among you that give that has dreamer, that's a dreamer of dreams. And gives these signs or wonders. And these sign or wonders will come to pass. <laughs> Whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods. <laughs> Which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. I'm telling you what. These prophets, a war, and whatever. Pay attention to what they're saying. Search the scriptures. If they're preaching Jesus unto you, and and if you're not searching the scriptures, you're going to automatically assume that, yeah, well, he's preaching Jesus, so I mean, he's got to be a prophet. But if you're searching the scriptures like you should be, and not saying amen to everything you hear, well, guess what? You'll be able to understand that that person's a false prophet because he's preaching another Jesus. Therefore, he is saying, let us go after other gods. There is another Jesus. It's those pictures you see in those churches, Sananda Emmanuel. <laughs> how many people will fall away? How many people will be deceived if that guy appears looking just like those pictures? I'm not saying it's going to happen like that. I'm just saying, what if? Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God proveth you. The time of trouble that we are coming in, in the great tribulation, is going to be a trial of our faith. He's testing you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. You shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments, but oh, oh, they, they've been done away with, so you got to worry about them no more. Yeah, okay. No, the Lord your God, and fear him, and keep his commandments, his, his, right there, you know, his, and obey his voice, and you shall serve him, and cleave unto him. And here it is again, and that prophet, or that dreamer of dreams, shall be put to death, because he has spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt, brought you out of the land of bondage, and these people want to put you back in bondage, because Egypt is a symbol of bondage. And redeemed you out of the house of bondage. So God redeems you. And you want to follow after these false prophets and false teachers. And you go right back into bondage. Because you agree with everything they say. That's why I said earlier. Do not. Come on my videos and listen to them and say, Amen, Amen, and not do the work yourself and search these things out for yourselves and do more study on it. By all means. There's a famine coming, and there's a famine for the Word of God. People will run to and fro. They shall not find it. 
That's why it's important that we need to learn these scriptures. That's why it's important that we need to be the Bereans to search these things out. Because if we're being the Bereans to search these things out to prove that whether I'm saying it's so, guess what? By doing that, you also digest scripture. Therefore, you can memorize scripture. So let's just say if Bibles are banned, you will have the word of God in your heart. I'm pretty sure, I mean, there's ways you can sneak around it. I'm pretty sure, hey, you know, go and type out Bibles and print copies out of them. You know, store them somewhere. Hey, if you got a bug out bag, they got waterproof Bibles. You can buy those, too. If you have to go and take off somewhere, I don't know. <sighs> but anyways... Which brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage to thrust thee out of the way which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk in. So shall thou put the evil away from the midst of thee. Evil can sound so good. So. Anyway. I hope this has uh, um, touched you. I hope this has blessed you in any way, shape, or form. Um, I only try to present to you the truth, folks. I mean, that's that's all I try to do. And uh, I, I'm not above being deceived, and I'm not above making mistakes. Okay. I have enough problems of my own of trying to um, deal with pride on my own, you know, and 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 it's a huge battle I go through every day. But we have to um, learn how not to be so prideful, and we have to uh, learn humility, and we have to uh, really learn how to not just agree with everything that is being shown us. Which is why we've gotten into the mess of all this massive deception that's going on in the first place. Because we have listened to books. We have read other books. We have listened to movies. We have listened to other preachers. <coughs> Regarding like the rapture and these types of things. And just because someone says it. And they point you to one little verse. And I am going to do a video on Revelation 3. Okay, and I am going to talk about the church not not being not mentioned after Revelation three. Hopefully, I can nip this in the bud. But I know there's going to be some of you that are going to reject it. It's just the way it is. But hopefully, some will understand it, and hopefully, some will come out of it. That is my prayer. So. Anyways, I love you guys out there. Um, until next time, truth be told, truth be known, stay safe. God bless. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.